2015, the U.S. organic food industry generated $39 billion, making up 5% of the total food market. Three billion of that revenue comes from the citrus industry, whose backbone resides in the Sunshine State. In fact, oranges are so popular in Florida that they have been named the state fruit, orange juice has been the state beverage since 1967, and the orange blossom is the official state flower. We became the Orange State long before we were a state. The Spanish introduced oranges to the St. Augustine area in the second half of the 16th century. And that's the beginnings of the orange industry. To many people around the world, the orange tree is synonymous with Florida, the Sunshine State. Now, Florida, in other words, was identifying itself as closely with oranges and orange juice as probably any other thing other than just, say, the beaches. So now, orange juice was a major marketing tool as well as a major export crop for Florida uh, over a period of many decades. Attention. At Florida's Natural, we're a small co-op of growers. Well, guys. We own the land, the trees, and the company. So our premium orange juice is made just from our fresh oranges, not from concentrate. Florida's Natural. It's as close to the grove as you can get. Oranges and orange juice are a staple item on breakfast tables across the nation. Today, Florida produces more than 90% of our country's orange juice. But what makes Florida the ideal location for citrus? We sat down with Garib Brar, an assistant professor and citrus horticulture extension specialist at the University of Florida, to find out. So basically, citrus can grow uh, anywhere between 35 degrees north of the equator to 35 degrees south of the equator. And Florida falls well within that range. We have a perfect climate. We have good humidity, we have good uh, sunlight, good heat, and the temperatures don't grow, don't go below freezing point very often. So citrus trees like it very well. While there are many Florida groves that cater to citrus, the highlands are situated in the ideal location, giving them an advantage over other parts of the state. Ray Royce, the executive director of the Highlands County Citrus Growers Association, explains. Highlands is, you know, obviously right near the geographic center of the citrus region of Florida. We have about 65,000 acres of citrus, about 13% of the uh, county is covered in citrus, about 8.5 million trees, and it just has the perfect environment for growing oranges. And that's what we primarily grow here is round oranges, Valencia and Hamlin oranges. This advantage can prove profitable for the Highlands economy, but also results in a dependency on the sweet and savory fruit. Highlands County, it affects every car dealer, it affects every single restaurant, it affects everyone, you know, that's selling fertilizer, chemicals, office supplies. And so in our county, uh, there's 100,000 people, about 42,000 of us work, and about one-third have a job in agriculture, most of those somewhat related to, to citrus, so it's a very important factor here. Most of the oranges will be made into juice, and then they'll be sold into the North American market, primarily you know, in the United States and to a lesser degree Canada. But the citrus industry goes beyond working in the farms. Transporting oranges throughout the United States and Canada extends even more employment options for Floridians.
one of the state's smaller distributors is the Florida Gift Fruit Shippers. However, during their busiest season, this small company can boast more than 100 workers a day. Through these employment opportunities, the citrus industry has become embedded in Florida's economy. However, nearly 80,000 of these jobs are threatened due to the spread of multiple diseases, one of which is citrus canker. The epidemic is caused by bacteria and affects more than 80% of the state's trees. Although canker is not harmful to humans, it significantly impacts the vitality of citrus trees. Fruits affected by the disease are not allowed to be sold due to lesions which appear on the outer peel. What happens, you know, we had the canker eradication program 10, 12 years ago. We lost a lot of trees there. That program decimated the Florida citrus nursery industry. And so we went up for a long period of time where there was very few replacement trees, young trees being put in the ground. The canker disease has been a nuisance, but it is not the worst problem Florida farmers have to face. Can you imagine breakfast without orange juice? Some growers in Florida say it could happen. Sweet start to the day is now threatened by a disease. As Florida's citrus industry is being hit by a deadly disease and no one has found a way to stop it. 80,000 Florida jobs are at stake if the citrus industry goes under and citrus greening disease is a very serious threat. Greening's impact has a devastating effect on citrus. At the root of the disease resides the Asian citrus psyllid. The Asian citrus psyllid was first found in tropical and subtropical Asia. It can be found in abundance in southern China, India, and Pakistan. But in the last 50 years, the disease has spread across the world to places like South Africa, Australia, and Brazil. It wasn't until June 1998 when the insect was first detected on the east coast of Florida. These small bugs, reaching only four millimeters in length, have a high reproductive rate, with females laying up to 800 eggs in their lifetime. The insects are very mobile, flying short distances and being carried by the wind, quickly spreading their disease from tree to tree. They damage plants directly by sucking the citrus juice and feeding on the tree's stems and leaves. This results in discoloration and green hues on the oranges, hence the nickname greening. Affected trees bear fruit that cannot be sold because of their poor size and quality. Jawad Qureshi, a research associate professor and entomologist at the South Florida Research and Education Center, gave us a closer look at this devastating disease. So it, it, it spread pretty quickly, and uh, within a couple of years, it was uh, almost in all the citrus producing states, uh, the counties of the state. So now the vector and the disease, they both are well established in the state. And uh, it's, it's a very damaging disease because once, once you get in the tree, uh, there is no cure at, at this point. So once you get it, it takes about six months to a year before you start seeing the symptoms of the disease. ones of uh, that Asian citrus psyllid, the insect that is responsible for spreading the bacterium uh, that is causing the citrus greening disease. At this point, the incidence of the disease is very high. So basically, I would say most of the tree in most groves, they probably have. And still, as I said, it's hard to estimate because you may have one tree sitting there and you say, oh, it's positive, we see the symptoms, we do the PCR, it comes up positive. There is no guarantee that the 50 or 100 around are negative. It's possible that the bacterium could be there, insect has already fed on the infected plant and gone and infect the uninfected ones. And it's only probably a matter of the time that when symptoms are gonna show up on even those trees as well. The tree you will see the uh, trees uh, dropping their leaves and when it comes to fruit, the fruits will be small sized, they will be lopsided and uh, they will not develop the proper color 
if you cut them and taste them it will be a bitter taste you will see the aborted seeds and once as they start maturing you will see a lot of fruit drop under the trees and so in some cases it's pretty significant. Robert C. Adair Jr., the executive director of the Florida Research Center for Agricultural Sustainability, explains that due to the vast expansion of this infection, Florida's farmers have been truly victimized. Virtually every county and every grove in the state of Florida has citrus greening disease in it. It has caused a uh, dramatic loss, a, a reduction in our fruit crop yield. We were producing 220 million boxes of citrus per year, and that has dropped dramatically in 2016. The disease has, has caused fruit drop. Some of the fruit are small and therefore cannot be used for either juice or for fresh fruit. So it's severely affected both fresh fruit and juice. And if I can consult my notes, th that production um, for juice oranges was at 200 boxes. And in, in this year, we're looking at only 36 million. So, so over 120 loss. Oh, way over 120. The spread of the disease is only getting worse. In 2016, the state of Florida has produced the lowest number of citrus ever recorded. Florida has gone from having 600,000 acres of citrus down to 388,000 acres, with that number expecting to drop even lower in the upcoming years. Florida's citrus income has been steadily declining, with citrus growers making less and spending more to fight these infections. And unfortunately, options for growing different types of fruit are restricted. A lot of groves are now uh, suffering losses. They're not able to produce an income. That's a very bad thing. The, the, the alternatives are for the citrus growers is to sell their land. However, it is ag land, and we've looked for alternative crops that can be planted on citrus. We've looked at peaches. We've looked at blueberries. We've looked at uh, pomegranates, um, avocados, and these types of things. Um, and each one of those has its limitations. The fact is that the citrus area that's planted with citrus is ideally suited for cit citrus. It does really well. We're really good at it. We do not have an alternative crop. To retaliate against greening, farmers are seeking various prevention methods. The trial that we're doing that's been funded by the citrus growers, and, and, and this project is basically based on using uh, the reflectivity of a metallized reflective mulch. It's a plastic polymer that's coated with um, um, a molecular layer of aluminum that's very shiny and then covered with a clear polymer that keeps it very shiny. So it's as shiny as aluminum foil. You can see it over here. This, this particular fabric has been installed for two years. It's holding up really well. And the idea is, is that that reflective area will repel the psyllids. The psyllids are the vector that carries the greening disease. The reflective mulch, the light energy that's reflected, apparently, we're not sure of the exact mechanism, but it disorientates the psyllids and they don't prefer to feed in those trees. So it's a natural repellence. We don't have to use insecticides. Uh, and we can get, during the daylight hours, it naturally uh, repels them. With the metallized reflective mulch, we're seeing trees producing fruit at, at year two. That's a fantastic thing. So if we can reduce the time that the trees take to mature to produce fruit, to become bearing, that's a very beneficial thing for the growers. So we think it's money well spent, it shows what research can do, and the advantage is there's no adverse impacts to the environment with insecticides. Besides using the metallized reflective mulch, we're using a chemical control for, for the Asian citrus salad. We're spraying an IPM approved product that's labeled for Florida citrus. The product is Diflubenzeron. It's a insect growth regulator, uh, again, compatible with integrated pest management, also known as IPM. And we're using that 
to uh, kill the, the Asian citrus salad to keep them from transmitting their disease to these trees. Now we're forced to use chemical control, but we're being very selective to use one that's compatible with the environment and compatible with foraging bees. And that product is, is labeled for this use and we're putting it out. In addition, and we're using an air blast sprayer and to carry the, the crop protectants to it, um, we use 125 gallons of water and we mix into that an insecticide, in this case, the diflubenzeron. In addition to that, we're putting foliar fertilizers. So we're feeding our trees, protecting against insects. And the third component is a copper hydroxide, which is a fungicide, relatively safe for the environment, and, but it, and is focused on the canopy of the tree, directly deposited on the leaves and on the fruit. And the reason that that's so important, that, that particular material, is consumers want a blemish-free fruit. The inner workings of the citrus industry are joining forces to combat these problems, as well as support and assist the struggling farmers. You establish the pest population here, and then you release the parasite, and give a good chance to the parasite to establish. And then when their number increase, they go out of this mesh, which allows only the beneficial guy to go out, but not the harmful insect. Millions of dollars has been put into research methods to try and stop greening from spreading. Finding a solution has been a constant battle for Florida's farmers. With the future of citrus still unpredictable, specialists are staying positive that they may soon find answers. So for now, that is the goal for the whole scientist community in Florida, to try to live with the disease to see how we can sustain our production, how we can maintain the, those production levels, or how we can increase the yields or the tree health while we have sporadic incidents of diseases in our orchards. So that is the goal. And um, the University of Florida scientists, they have come up with the, the new improved varieties. Uh, they have been, uh, there have been improved rootstock varieties from the USDA's uh, breeding program that show promise in combating that disease. So looking into the future, there is promise. So we will eventually find a way to, to live with the disease and survive. We have tackled the vector really well. A couple of mode of actions, like eight or nine mode of actions of different chemistries or insecticides uh, that we have identified that they give a very good control of this insect. So on the vector side, it's, 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 it's a lot of development and the same thing University of Florida and the USDA, they are working on developing the disease resistant plants. And there are developments there as well. There are rootstocks that show promise to tolerate or resist the disease. So it's only a matter of learning to live with it. Because uh, we, we are past the eradication phase. So we cannot really eradicate the disease. And, and the other nations like China, India, Pakistan, uh, even Brazil, they have learned to live with it. And, and that's what we have to do. Currently, Florida's citrus budget is at $30 million. However, as of April 28, 2016, the state is looking to cut $10 million in funds. That money would come directly out of the industry's advertising budget. The Florida Citrus Commission will determine final figures after the state sees how much money is remaining at the end of the year.